Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. The first thing we have here is a launch to Saturn with supplies, food, water and oxygen for our Saturn tourists. Really they wanted to go to Titan, that's Mr. Doobie and Thy Lord Root. Uh, again, these missions are all conducted at the behest of tourists in my channel, in my Twitch channel and they pay struts which they earn by watching the channel in order to go places and then I have to keep them alive with supplies because they take food, water and oxygen. So this is a supply mission. Uh, they haven't arrived at uh, Saturn or anything like that yet. Uh, we are just sending supplies ahead of time to make sure that those will be there when they get there. And that was the Daenerys Aerospike SSTO at work again, uh, which well, we're gonna see a lot of it, let's face it. This is the transfer burn. I think I, uh, I... I don't know why I'm not using Jupiter to help with the transfer in this case. We are at the Jupiter window. We could use it to slingshot it to the Saturn. Maybe the timing was a little bit off there. Anyway, but a uh, hefty transfer burn, but this stage can mostly do it. After that, there are ion engines on this to do the rest, including the capture around Saturn, which shouldn't be too difficult if we start out close to Saturn and capture because as we uh, as I try and finagle it here uh, the Oberth effect in this case is really really strong so anyway one thing we have to do is make sure that we are in line with Titan as much as possible and the other moons preferably but Titan in particular and Titan could potentially help with bringing us to a lower orbit after a while as long as we're at the right inclination so next I was time warping to the next things we needed to do and you can see Kerbal Alarm Clock there with a fairly hefty list of Mars and Mercury missions. So we have um, Mercury mid-course adjustments and Mars arrivals at Mars that we are handling. This here is the crewed Mars mission with Desisky and Derlaff. Uh, apologies for a little black square there uh, covering up a part of the screen and that's because that was stream specific stuff that isn't relevant at this point. So after checking up on them, I hop over to the Mercury Station mission, which has Katak on board, and uh, see what the situation is there and whether I'll have enough time to do the burn. I was worried that it was ion engines, but we are able to do the burn with these uh, nuclear engines, so that's not so time sensitive, and I can time warp with this mission a little bit, get it closer to Mars first. That allows the water recycler to work properly. Sometimes the water recycling doesn't seem to work properly when I'm not focused on it, so I was a little bit concerned about that sort of thing. And then I did the correction with Mars, I'm uh, sorry, Mercury Station. And that's how that went. But there's a lot more to be done. Of course, uh, we happen to have zero boil off or low boil off, low enough boil off to make that burn work with the liquid hydrogen. Um, that would be an enabling technology for nuclear engines. So hope that's all right, but yeah, that's a whole complicated business about whether the tanks should be able to do that. Anyway, here Mars Vessel 1 is capturing around Mars. Uh, sorry for the lack of sound. That is because I lost the file uh, that I originally recorded. I think it became corrupt, so I'm using the backup file from Twitch, and that does not have separate audio streams. So. Anyway, that is how we captured, and we used the ED4V engine on the Sajita upper stage there to do that. And next up is a supply vessel for Mars. This too is aiming to capture, but not immediately. It's about two days from Mars SOI entry to when we actually do the burn at periapsis. And I wanted to make sure that everything is sort of lined up with Mars Vessel 1 now. Since that has captured, we need to make sure that the other missions coming in are at the right inclination and also can rendezvous. So I was setting that up for this supply vessel and also Mars Station. And this is capturing now. There's just a bunch of supplies in a rather heavy, unfortunately heavy, Leonardo style PMM. And this has captured, again using the methane oxygen burning ED4V engine, 1000 kilonewtons. And here I'm aiming for a rendezvous. 
and this is a correction burn based on our relative inclin uh yeah we're doing the relative inclination now because of timing purposes obviously it'd be better higher up but i needed to time it right the orbital period is so long that if we waited until apoapsis it would cause problems for the other things we need to focus on and one of those is the mercury probe which is just a little scanner probe to scan for ore based mainly ore on mercury so we are just doing a correction burn here mid-course to make sure that it hits mercury properly and then the capture burn is going to be hefty you can see that 11,000 meters per second that's not the nicest thing ever but at least it's not doing it with the ion engines it's got uh, hypergolic engines to work with this is mars station mars station one as it turns out uh, and we are capturing it's got that hub in front it's got more living space and then a whole bunch of briz stuff on the tail uh, basically two full brizzes worth of hypergolic fuel and we are going to try and dock mars vessel one as well as a supply ship to this so then we have to do a whole series of corrections to try and get everything together of course and mars vessel one is over here it's nice to see mars in the background finally of course those trips to Saturn are going to take a while, though. Who knows when those are going to get there. Anyway, so this is the first rendezvous, and this is the Mars Vessel 1 with the Mars Station. And so we're just lining up. This Mars Vessel 1 has the benefit of extra RCS thrusters that help with translation, so it's better to have it do the docking. The Sajita upper stage on it is permanently attached. I don't think I put a decoupler there, so that is a permanent part. And here we are with a uh, non-corrupted part of the video, so we have sound again. Okay, there's the docking, and we are connected. Incidentally, right behind the docking port is the water recycler module that I had made based on numbers from the International Space Station. Though, whether those numbers are always read correctly by TAC life support is a bit of a problem. Anyway, this is a Vulcan rocket, as you can see, and it is launching supplies to Skylab 2 around the Earth. It turns out we can see the red TAC life support icon on the right there, and that indicates that our supplies are low at Skylab 2, and we really needed to send this up right away. So, yep, we had to do this in the midst of everything else. I had locked the fuel tank on the second stage here so that the launch clamps wouldn't fill it up. So we need to relight the RL-10s. Uh, so, uh, yeah, two RL-10Cs on the Vulcan rocket. And as usual with the Vulcan rocket, I am horrible at trying to get it to orbit properly. And I misjudge how much I needed to toss it up. But this time, the supply vessel, the cargo ship, which is a truncated HTV, will survive, thanks to an AJ-10-190 engine. And so, it doesn't quite get into a proper orbit. You can see the periapsis is below 140 kilometers, so that's not actually out of the atmosphere, but uh, I managed to salvage it and get over to Skylab 2. So here is it doing the rendezvous, here it is doing the rendezvous, and here it is docking. So that was managed swiftly, uh, well not that swiftly, not with those long burns with the upper stage of Vulcan and then AJ-10-190, but well enough so that we could continue with the Mars and Mercury missions. And so now we need to get the supplies over to the station plus the Mars vessel. We'll just call it Mars Station from now on. So, just getting these supplies to Mars Station. Spinning its way to its periapsis. A little bit of a scenic view. And there's the retro burn for rendezvous. And then uh, orbit matching stuff. I did with RCS to, I'm sure, to the light of the viewers. But we have limited ignitions on the ED-4V, and I wanted to use one here, though this was also a fairly short burn. And then finally, we are arriving. So there is 
Mars Station. And a whole bunch of Mars craters in front of us. I wish I could identify them like this. And the approach continues. And initially, I line up with the wrong docking port. Uh, you can sort of see that's actually a Russian docking port, Russian style docking port. So it, it's the drogue part and then it needs a, pro a probe. I wanted the top one, but I spent all this time lining up with this and then I suddenly realized, oops, this is not the right type. So I had to back off and spin a bit and go for the top one. Yep. All these complicated docking ports, but here we are. And... And it's docked. So there we go. We've got our supplies and they're all set. They didn't pay enough to land on Mars, so they're hanging out up there for the time being. And next up, we are handling a whole bunch of Mercury things. This is the return vessel, and it's going to exhaust its nuclear stage, and then need to do the rest of this correction burn with the ion engines. The hope is that this burn will bring its orbit down so that uh, the capture around Mercury will be easier, because currently it costs quite a lot of Delta V, so we're basically trying to do uh, four to five thousand meters per second ahead of time. But this is sort of a best laid plans sort of situation here, unfortunately. But there's the awesome power of 50 ion engines. Those uh, five engines are actually five clusters of 10 ion engines. And we've got a nuclear reactor, a rather small nuclear reactor, but it's still a nuclear reactor powering them. And. Well, we have to make further corrections, as uh, sort of expected. And then this is the supply vessel for Mercury. So food, water, and oxygen. And we are doing this burn exclusively with the nuclear engine, thankfully. Timing would have been tough, but there we see the encounter at Mercury. And a fairly low periapsis, we'll pull it out with the RCS eventually. And we separate off the mission from the nuclear stage, because nuclear stage had nothing left at that point. And finally, further corrections. So with that, that is basically how that all went, and we'll see how the rest of it goes next time. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.